Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's Episcopal Church Online. I'm Reverend Janae and I'm so glad that you've come to worship with us this morning. Please join in as we sing, as we pray, and as we learn together through God's word. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, they spent as much time together in a temple. They broke bread at home, and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Prince of Peace, make 
us one body. Come, our Lord Jesus, reconcile your people. Come now, O God of love, make us one body. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile your people. Come now and set us free, O God, our Savior. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile all nations. Come, hope of unity, make us one body. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile all nations. A reading from the Gospel of John. Very truly I tell you, Jesus said, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Take our eyes and see through them. Take our ears and hear through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and fill them with your fire. Amen. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. The Acts of the Apostles is our most comprehensive history of the spiritual and political movement that gave birth 
to the early church. Today's passage became the symbol of the early Christian community. It is just a peek into the faith of the early, how the early church was built. Today's reading from Acts gives us a set of guidelines that on what we need to do to live our lives as Jesus lived his. These few verses are like a little book of directions. They help us answer the question, how do we live as Easter people? A few chapters beyond today's chapter, in chapter 6 of the Acts of the Apostles, Stephen, along with seven other, six other disciples, was selected by the twelve apostles to be responsible for the early church's feeding ministry. The apostles were spending all of their time teaching and praying. The church was growing so rapidly that the Greek widows and orphans were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. So we are told the apostles laid hands on seven men of good standing and ordained them as the church's first deacons. From the Greek, diakonia, deacon, means literally one who serves. And their job was exactly that, to serve the widows and orphans. Stephen is described as a man full of grace and power. Eventually, the religious authorities became so threatened by Stephen that they took him outside of the city and stoned him to death. In Stephen, we see that to believe in Jesus requires not just believing certain things about Jesus, but living as Jesus lived. It was living this life that cost Jesus, cost Stephen his life. In the first verse from today's reading, we learn that the first Christians had a set of practices that nurtured their lives and helped them not only to believe certain things about Jesus, but to live as Jesus lived. This is the earliest listing of what came to be known as the marks of the church, characteristics that identified the church as the church beyond confessing Jesus as Lord. It is God's grace that causes growth, but those were the ways of nourishing the early Christian spiritual life in Christ. These marks have not changed in over 2,000 years. First, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, maybe something like a Bible study, or maybe two or three gathered for coffee discussing the scriptures. A mark of authenticity and health of a church is what it does with the writings of these early Christian leaders. We are called to explore the texts, to dwell in scripture, a practice that has been passed down to us from our ancient brothers and sisters. We Episcopalians take this very seriously. In worship, we read an Old Testament lesson, we read a psalm, we read a lesson in the Old, New Testament from the epistles, and we read a gospel lesson every week. We spend more time dwelling in the Word on a Sunday morning than most traditions. But we are also expected to spend time exploring scripture throughout the week. That idea can be intimidating for some of us. Maybe we don't grasp the many different styles of literature and poetic language, much less comprehend the numerous depths of its meaning. We can't remember what we read, much less memorize and quote scripture chapter and verse. But what's important to understand here is that it is not about total recall or even complete comprehension. It is about putting forth an active effort. It is active and not passive. We might be surprised how much we do remember 
once we decide to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching on a regular basis. It may only be 10 minutes out of your day, but it is well worth it. The second thing the early Christians did was to devote themselves to fellowship. A mark of authenticity and vitality in a congregation is the quality of our relationships and our efforts to include others in those relationships. Devotion to fellowship translates to radical hospitality. This kind of hospitality takes work. It is part of St. Michael's mission statement, celebrating God's beauty, loving God's people, serving God's world. We serve God's world every time we introduce ourselves to someone new, every time we invite someone to coffee hour or to adult forum, when we meet a neighbor, we invite them to church, when we invite our wider community to join us in the fall for our annual fall fest, when we participate in our outreach programs, when we pray for others, or when we join together for our spaghetti dinners or our pie auction, and in so many other ways. Radical hospitality means paying attention to the newcomers in our midst and helping them find their way. On more than one occasion, I have introduced myself to someone thinking they were new, only to be told that they had been members for 15 years. However, I console the egg on my face by telling myself that it's always better to ask and be wrong than to leave someone feeling unknown, unloved, or unwanted. When we are devoted to fellowship, people are made to feel a part of our community. They leave feeling encouraged and supported. Listen to some of the words of inclusivity from the Bible. Love one another. Encourage one another. Be kind to one another. Comfort one another. Inform one another. Fellowship with one another. Confess your faults to one another. Forgive one another. Pray for one another. Minister to one another. Bear one another's burdens. And the list goes on. This is the radical hospitality that Jesus taught the disciples and was carried forward and held on to by the early Christians and then passed on to us. Male or female, Christian or Jew, black or white, physically limited or athletic, everyone is welcome. Radical hospitality, radical fellowship, is inclusive. Next, they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Is this a reference to our Eucharistic meal or a reference to our potluck suppers? I think the answer is yes. Certainly breaking of bread alludes to the Lord's Supper. As a community of faith, we are spiritually fed by the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. The promise of Jesus through the breaking of the bread transcends words. The Eucharist avails itself to all of our senses, but we will miss it if we are not devoted to it. And I am sure that many of us are missing it right now as we weather this pandemic but we look forward to the day when we will meet again around the altar for this Eucharistic meal. As we heard from Janae last week, Jesus made himself known to the disciples, not on the road to Emmaus, but after they reached their destination and he broke bread with them. In the Acts of the Apostles, this action recalls the significance of centering these meals on Jesus in some meaningful way. 
whether it is in a formal Eucharistic meal or an informal spaghetti dinner, whether it's a meal by ourselves or a meal with our family or a meal with friends. Breaking bread in all cases is a sacramental act. And lastly, the church devoted themselves to the prayers. More than a part of worship, worship prayer is for each one of us. It gives us the opportunity for personal communion with God. And notice that it is prayers, plural, that the early community is devoted to. It seems that the earliest Christians may have been learning from some form of set prayers, the Lord's Prayer. Certainly they knew the Psalms and sang them and, and, and read them, and maybe many others. We know that there are so many ways to pray and that there is no wrong way to be devoted to prayers individually and corporately. We must pursue prayer intentionally. The early Christians worshiped daily. They ate their meals together with glad and generous hearts. Their numbers grew almost exponentially, 3,000 in this case, because people saw in how they lived a way of living that made them say, this is the way God wants me to live. The manifestation of the early church found in these four marks of the church, the teaching of the apostles and fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers. These marks were the church's earliest response to the voice of the good shepherd they knew his voice, and they followed. My 12-year-old granddaughter has a sheep. She named her Mimi. Mimi is what is known as a bummer lamb. For whatever reason, her mother rejected her, and so she came to live at the farm. She immediately attached herself to Darby, and Darby to her. To this day, Mimi will come only to Darby's voice. I can stand and call her all day long and she will not even turn her head to look at me. But when she hears Darby's voice, Mimi knows it and Mimi follows her. The early church knew the voice of the Good Shepherd and they knew what God was calling them to do. As a church community, 2,000 years later, it is humbling to know that we are still called by our Good Shepherd to devote ourselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Amen. Please join us in affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A, page 97 of the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. A Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter O God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Guidance Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the oppressed, Lord, look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these our neighbors. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all and grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know, know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us pray for the concerns of St. Michael's community, for parishioners who need comfort and healing, Sharon Baptiste, Freddie Ann Clark, Barbara Cope, Dick Cope, Holly Dean, Ruth Dimlaley, Paul Drennard, Caitlin Eschenroder, Valerie Farmer, Christy, Sandy, Larry, and Elizabeth Feidler, Ron Hayslip, Judy Higgins, Barbara Roish, Philip, grandson of Roger and Martha Scott, Ben Thompson, Annie Ward, Benny Ward, and Bob and Diane Zwicker. For those who have died, we pray for all our loved ones who we see no longer, especially Nancy Hughes. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays today. We pray for all those celebrating anniversaries this week, including Brad Showalter and Prissy Nugent. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Kubwa in Nigeria. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. James in Portsmouth, St. John's Portsmouth, and Trinity Portsmouth. 
In our Richmond cycle of prayer, we pray for all who are incarcerated in jails and prisons, for their families and their loved ones. And for the needs of our congregation, please add your prayer. Amen. conclude our prayers today, let us join together in the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. 
Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of God, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>